I'm squatting here in the deepest, darkest recesses of my garage bathroom, squatting on a device that could help you poo a lot better. But before I show you what it is, I want you to ask yourself a question. How much is a good poo worth to you? Earlier this year, I shared a video where I talked about some of my own poo problems and I got a lot of responses. And I also got a message from a company with a device that I thought was actually too good to be true for my poo. I'm gonna talk with you about some costs, I'm gonna talk with you about some alternatives, and I'm going to talk about how my journey with poo has turned out six months later. And I'm gonna ask you what you think the best option is for you to have a good poo. I mean, before we even get started, you can feel free to drop me a comment about what your poo problems are and how you've solved them. Leave that comment down below. Now, if you're ready, let's get ready to think right, move right, and poo right. Let's take a quick second to talk about poo. It's supposed to be well-formed. It should be like sausages and it should come out fairly easily. But a lot of people, myself included, have trouble sometimes with how their poo comes out. For me, it was really watery and kind of explosive for several months and maybe even more than a year while my stomach was just doing all kinds of weird things. At some point, I was seemingly allergic to blueberries, strawberries, all kinds of fruit. Even when I would eat chicken soup, my stomach would gurgle and rumble, and it made my belly distended at night when all this gas would build up. But that's not everybody's experience with their poo. Some people have trouble pooing. They're constipated all the time, and that's something that showed up in the comment section on that previous video, and that's how I ended up getting in touch with a company called Squat Joy, which really wants to do something to help you and your poo. You see, in that video, I talked about the importance of being able to get close to a deep squat position. I talk a lot about the deep Asian squat on this channel and how you can unlock that for yourself. And one of the big benefits of being able to actually do a deep Asian squat is that you could potentially poo a lot easier if you're out in the wilderness and you just need to drop a load. Because while you may take for granted that you can just drop a load easily in a toilet that is elevated from the floor, if you go out into the woods, there are no toilets. And the only way to poo without pooing on your legs or on your feet is to get into a really deep squat. When you go to poo on a toilet, you may find that you are constipated because you're not in that deep squat position. The deep squat position allows poo to get out of your butt a lot easier. And when you're in a seated position, especially on a toilet that's really high and elevated, you may run into issues with those tubes that let poo out, letting go enough to allow the poo to get through. And then we have a sad you. Now to get around this problem, you could use a squatty potty or other cheap knockoffs that you can find all over the place, probably on Amazon though. I hate Amazon and I strongly suggest you don't use them to buy your stuff. Go to a store, find an actual physical store and buy a stool or buy some yoga blocks and you can use that to help you actually get into a squat-like position while on the toilet. Think of the tube that leads to your butthole like a garden hose. There are a couple places where that hose can get kinked. And when you're in a deep squatting position, that hose is fully open. There are no kinks in the hose. But when you are sitting, you actually end up having some muscle that actually wraps around and kinks that hose, which requires you to then actually push a little harder to get your poo out of the tube. The end result is you feel like you have to try a lot harder. You might be pushing and grunting and trying to force poo out of that tube. And even if you are successful, you might feel like you just didn't get all of it out. But when you're in a deep squat, those kinks are actually released and everything can flow through. But using implements to kind of approximate a squat position is not really getting into a squat position. And after Squat Joy, this company that makes this really weird poo device for people with constipation, I got in touch with Jonathan Isbitt, the author of a book about the importance of squatting while you poo. And it's a fascinating self-published book. I encourage you to check it out if you can somehow get a copy. He sent it to me for free. I went through it very quickly and it kind of blew my mind. 
I haven't gone through and verified all the information that I found in it, but one of the major claims in this book is that a ton of diseases, particularly appendicitis, are diseases that arise as a result of lack of ability to squat. And things like appendicitis are a symptom that has arisen only since the growing popularity of the British toilet, this so-called crapper, which was invented by, I believe his name, no joke, was John Crapper. The author argues that a lot of bowel dysfunction is actually a consequence of not squatting to poo. So I thought, hey, I love squatting and I've never squatted to poo before. Let me try this squat joy thing and see how it affects my poo. Even though I'm not constipated, maybe it'll have some extra benefit for my gut health and I'll start to feel a little bit better and a little less bloated. And that's how I ended up with this absolutely crazy thing that you see in front of you right now. This is the Squat Joy in all its glory, the super deluxe version, I forgot the actual name of it, but this is it. You can see these crazy handles here. You can see there's a little stool here. You can see how these flaps, yes, they are flaps, fit right over the toilet bowl, the dirty toilet bowl, and you can see how solid that is. So there's a little bit of clearance between the flap and the actual porcelain. And you just stand up on those little flaps and poo. Now I said stand up, but really what I meant to say was you get up on here and squat to poo. So you can see what happens when you get up on here, you're squatting, you have a direct line of fire into the toilet bowl. Now, if you live outside of Asia, you probably have no opportunities to squat and poo. But with the Squat Joy, you can actually squat and poo. You can hold on to these handles and just drop a load and it goes pretty easy and pretty smooth. At least it did for me. The thing is my poo was already coming out pretty easy and being in this position actually made things a little bit too easy because I was now in an elevated position far above the water of the toilet bowl, which meant my poo had a lot longer distance to travel, which meant I had a much bigger problem that any amateur physicist could anticipate. I've got a bowl of water right here, and you can see that if I just drop a little piece of candy in there from just like an inch to a half inch above the water, there's no splash. But if I take that same piece of metaphorical poo and hold it higher by several inches and drop it in the water, what's gonna happen? Let's do that one more time for everybody who's watching from the cheap seats. If I hold this from way up here and drop it in. Splash city. All right, I need to wipe that up or my wife's gonna kill me. Oh, it's brown. The big takeaway here is the depth of the toilet bowl can make a huge difference because if you are squatting a couple inches above the normal level of your seat, you are really flirting with disaster if this is already a really deep bowl. And unfortunately, the bowls in my house are pretty deep. Even when I'm sitting on a normal seat, I find that they splash a lot more than I'd like them to, especially when I compare them to some other toilets that I've used where the toilets are much shallower and are just generally lower to the ground, which by the way, I love because that means it's more like being in a squat. So while it feels super awesome to get into this squat with my fighter jet controls and get ready to just let her drop, not let her rip actually, you're not forcing, you're, when you're in a deep squat, you're not actually like grunting and pushing, you're actually just kind of hanging out and relaxing and just letting stuff drop out, which is one of the advantages to squatting to poo because you're no longer bearing down the way you do when you're constipated and you're strong to push. If you have constipation and you're trying to get into a deep squat to poo, this is a nice thing to have, but you've got to solve the splash problem. And so I wanted to solve that problem and make sure there was some way that somebody could use this without having splash back if they have a high toilet like this. 
So I emailed the folks at SquatJoy and what they told me was using uh, toilet paper over the water would be useful. It would just negate the uh, splash, which is kind of true, but it only works on the first poo. Because let's say you're a bomber flying over your target. If you're only dropping one fat boy down to the surface and it hits that toilet paper, no problem. But if your payload has multiple bombs, maybe two, three, or four bombs, then you've got three bombs or more that aren't hitting any toilet paper because that first bomb took care of that, took out the defenses, and then you've got Splash City again. So let's take a good hard look at how toilet paper works in this instance. I just put some toilet paper here in the bowl and it's kind of sticking to the surface, but it looks like, oh no, it's, it's kind of sinking. So I'm just gonna add another piece right on top and then I'm going to take <clears throat> my metaphorical poo-poo and I'm gonna drop it in there and we're gonna see what happens. Dropping it from, I don't know, roughly 10, 12 inches no splash, basically no splash. There's a little bit to the sides there, but now uh, that toilet paper is sinking and it's sinking rapidly. It's like the Titanic. Goodbye, Leonardo. And now the Titanic is totally at the bottom. I'm gonna grab that same piece of metaphorical poo so that we have a fair redrop, right? So now there is no more poo there or no more toilet paper there. And I'm just gonna drop from roughly the same height. And I think you know what's gonna happen. It's gonna splash. So if that first piece of poo takes down your toilet paper, you're screwed. So what I ended up doing was I would hold toilet paper in my hands and after the first drop, I'd throw some more in there and hope that that would catch it. But then if there is more than one piece of poo in your payload, then you gotta keep trying to drop and drop and drop before the water starts splashing all over the place. And that's not fun. What is fun is dropping fake poo into a bowl of water. This is really surprisingly fun. You should try it. Oh, it's on my glasses. Ew. So using toilet paper to mitigate the splashback with the squat joy didn't really work, but I did find a solution by thinking about the problem. The height that I was dropping from and the amount of water below was making a splash issue. And I realized if there were less water, if there were a shallower, point of water for the poo to land in, I might have less of a splash problem. So if we return to our metaphorical toilet bowls, our original bowl is pretty deep. It's got like uh, maybe two inches of water in it. And we've already seen that when I drop, well this time let's do Snickers. When I drop a metaphorical poo into the water, it's gonna splash. There's a lot of water to splash out, right? It comes in, it goes push. And I'm sure there's a scientific word to describe all this, but all I'm gonna say is what happens when I reduce the amount of water in there and then I drop that same poo in. If I drop it, there's less water to splash. It's lower in the bowl. It's not getting out all kinds of good things. So I thought about this and realized, hey, if I make one small change to how I'm using the Squat Joy, I might be able to eliminate the splash problem. I had the Squat Joy position so that I was pooing directly into the deepest part of the water. But if I slid it forward, I could arrange it so I'd be pooing towards the front of the bowl. With the Squat Joy move forward, I could set it so I could poo just into the very little bit of water towards the front here, or I could even hit the porcelain in the front there. Now, of course, you don't wanna end up with a bunch of smearing on the front there, so what you could do, and what I was doing, was just putting toilet paper right there on the front, so then the poo hits the toilet paper, doesn't hit the porcelain, and when you flush, it just all goes down and you don't stain your seat. Con contrast that with when you have the Squat Joy right there, so your butt is right over the deepest portion of the water, and poof, splash city. So moving it forward really works well for mitigating the splash, but there's unfortunately another problem that shows up. 
So I don't know about you, but when I poo, I often also need to do the thing that precedes number two, which is number one. And if you have the squat joy centered over the toilet, then number one is not really an issue. You just aim things down if you're a guy and if you're a girl, I don't even think you have to aim. It just goes straight down. But somebody let me know, confirm that in the comment section. Now, if you are trying to hit the front of the toilet when you're dropping bombs, with your number two and you're scooting forward, now you run into a little bit of an issue because when you are trying to aim down, you might be hitting the front of the toilet bowl, the rim, and it comes down the front. Or if you're really trying to be careful about your poo and you're really scooting forward, you might just be peeing straight down onto the floor. So solution to this is to make sure you've emptied all liquids before you go onto squat joy to number two. And guys, if you have any extra liquid in there, just know that there's a strong possibility it might be dripping straight on the floor. So seriously, you got to take care of the business or your wife is gonna be really upset. And a couple final things I wanna say about this. I am showing you this video with these handles attached. And when I first installed this in my bathroom, I also had the handles attached because I was just really scared and you know, I just didn't know what to expect perching over a toilet bowl and I wanted to have the extra safety. I also had this little stool that my foot is on right now. I had that right there all the time so that I could just step up and then step onto the platforms and I use all these things to keep myself feeling safe. This one just won't come out. But eventually I did get them both out. I put them away. I moved the stool out of the way because once I felt comfortable and stable with this thing, I realized it's really not that hard. So if you have enough hip mobility and leg strength to stay in the squat, you likely are pretty good in getting onto this thing without all the accoutrement. But if you have any, any inkling that you can't handle it, use the safety devices. One thing I will say, however, about the design of these um, fighter jet pilot handles is if you're not careful about how you use them, there's a potential for there to be a leverage issue. Um, I mentioned this to the Squat Joy people, so the more, recent, um, more recently manufactured versions of the Squat Joy may not have this problem. They told me they fixed this. But if you're coming down and you put too much pressure on these handles that are angled like this, what's gonna happen is you're going to leverage this thing forward and you're going to potentially hurt yourself in a tragic toilet accident. Now, as I understand it, this has been addressed and fixed in some recent updates, and these are now vertical, so I haven't had a chance to experiment with that, but I imagine that's probably a better situation than being able to leverage the whole thing forward. Also, if you have a small child around, it's a really good idea to consider warning them, educating them, making sure they are never alone with this thing um, and just making sure they're trained well. You know, my, my son's never had an issue, but there is a potential pinch point here. If this thing comes down, you can really pinch something. Some kids are dumb and they will hurt themselves. So if you've got one of those kids, make sure you just lock the bathroom door all the time and use a little key to get in and I don't know, leave the kid in their own room, lock them in there. Now, I want to talk about my personal experience with the Squat Joy, my gut issues, and whether or not I still use the Squat Joy. First of all, I'm not currently using the Squat Joy. It does live in my garage bathroom for whenever I get the urge to squat while I poo. I really did actually enjoy squatting to poo. It's kind of a nice little workout. I could totally see how it would help you maintain your ability to deep squat for the rest of your life because you're spending you know, a minute, two minutes deep in that squat, just letting stuff out. But I couldn't solve the problems enough with the splash and the number ones getting onto the floor and all that stuff because my toilets are just designed just poorly. Just, they're just, it's a terrible design to have such tall, deep toilets. Also, if you're somebody who's constipated, I think the squat joy makes a lot of sense because it's literally helping you physically configure your 
everything, your rectum, your colon, everything. It's helping you configure all that the right way so you don't have to strain to drop your deuces into the water. If you're somebody who has loose stools or splatty stools, I highly don't recommend the squat joy because it's gonna make a lot of messes that you're just not going to enjoy. Now, I am happy to report that my own gut issues seem to have mostly resolved in the last month. In my previous video, I mentioned digestive enzymes and probiotics being good things to check out. I had had some positive benefits from those things, but in the last month, I actually really consistently started taking some probiotics that actually really helped. I just took them once a day and my gut just seemed to respond really, really well things started to feel more normal, more regular. I started getting some nicely shaped sausages and I no longer feel bloated and gassy at night. With all those problems apparently solved, I no longer feel the need to experiment with that squat while I poo because I just don't wanna deal with the mess and taking off the pants and figuring out what to do with your pants if you don't wanna take them fully off, which is maybe a topic for a whole other video. If you wanna learn, how you're supposed to squat to poo while still keeping your pants on, drop me a comment down below. And spoiler alert, you can't just pull them down around your ankles. That's the mistake I was making, but go try it. Go to the bathroom and try it right now and see what happens if you do a deep squat with your pants around your ankles. See where it looks like the poo and pee is gonna go. You're not gonna like it. There's a trick to this that it took a lot of searching to figure out. Because I'm not using the Squat Joy and I have these stupidly tall toilets, I do use a squatty potty to try to get myself into as close of a squatting position as possible. I really am seriously considering replacing these toilets with just lower toilets so I no longer feel like things are just so weird. The ironic thing is the toilet in the garage is actually shaped a lot better. It doesn't have so much depth. It's a lot lower to the floor and it's longer, so there's a lot more room for me to actually poo without splashback, which is why the Squat Joy now lives in the garage and why when I wanna get a nice good squatting poo, I gotta come downstairs to the garage. One thing that I think works well if you're trying to get more into a poo position is when you are sitting on the toilet, instead of just like bearing down and grunting, you can also try to posteriorly tilt your pelvis so if, especially if you're using the squatty potty, you're already getting closer to the squat position, doing a little more posterior pelvic tilt can help you feel a little more ready to evacuate. If you're somebody who's constipated and you're looking for a way to have better poos, then you might wanna check out the Squat Joy. I'm gonna drop a link to their website in the description box and I'm gonna put it on screen as well. Now I'm not gonna spoil the surprise for you, but the reason I asked how much you'd be willing to spend for a good easy poo, it's because this Squat Joy thing is not very cheap. So you're gonna wanna go to their website and check out the prices and all the different options they have for these things. They do custom make them out of metal to fit your toilet dimensions. So there is a high degree of customizability. It's a solid, well-built item. It is a little bulky, but it's also very easy to assemble once you receive it in your home. Okay, I lied. I'm gonna ruin the surprise for you a little bit. The cheapest model on their website right now is actually $600. So it's a lot of money. Now, if you are strapped for cash, this is probably not something you're gonna wanna go get. But if you have extra money and your poo is a problem and you're constipated and you'd like something that's natural that might really, really help you get more regular, then it's seriously something you should consider. But I don't think I would take out a second mortgage to do this. If you want a really cheap alternative to pooping in a squat, you can actually just get yourself a kitty litter box and squat on the ground. I know what you're thinking and no, I have actually never tried it. If you decide that squatting to poo sounds right for you and you want to squat joy for yourself, use the link that you'll find in the description box for a special discount for viewers of this channel. If you use the link down below, you'll save some money and Squat Joy will share a very small commission with me for helping you have a better poo. Let me know your thoughts about deep squats and poo by dropping me a comment down below. 
Please subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and get on my newsletter at uprighthealth.com slash newsletter. You can support me on Patreon or make a donation by finding the links in the description box or you can use the join and thanks buttons on YouTube to become a member or to just send me a super thanks. And if you want more free videos to help you improve your body, check these out here. Seriously, subscribe. Please subscribe, share this, and as always, I hope you remember that pain sucks. Life shouldn't. <laughs>